Three words capture PHA1 for me, inspiration, hope, and convergence. Inspiration comes from hearing the stories of new friends, hearing about their resistance and their resilience. Hope comes from finding so many comrades you didn't know you had and finding that we are part of a global social movement. But I want to focus on convergence because this is central to the underlying theory of change of PHM. Convergence includes three processes. The first is building solidarity. Building solidarity through listening to stories from far away and starting to identify with the subjects of those stories. The second process is involves recognizing the underlying structural conditions which are common to the different experiences of oppression, exclusion, and denial. And the third part of convergence is the process of working collectively on strategies for action which address the priority issues in our own situation, but do so in ways that are shaped by a shared understanding of the underlying structural determinants and which are complementary across the different streams of the movement. Inspiration, hope and convergence have wound their way through all of the assemblies, people's health assemblies that we have held since 2000. This is a picture from 2005 the, in Cuenca, the PHA2. A picture of you know, some of these people will be familiar to you. This one's Zafrula, uh, Ravi Narayan, Artur, uh, Arturo, Susanna, Fran. Um, this one's from 2012, PHA3 in Cape Town. Again, David Sanders again, uh, Suit with David, Alexis, and this one from 2018 in, uh, again, when we returned to uh, Savar in Bangladesh. For those who have not met him, this is the amazing Amit Sengupta delivering the closing speech at PHA4. Amit died in a swimming accident just days after the closure of PHA4. He had made a huge contribution to PHM, including his work in the development of the Charter, including editing several issues of Global Health Watch and his work in organising PHA4. But back to convergence. The institutions and laws which sustain transnational capitalism include the US military, the Bretton Woods Institution and a tangle of trade and investment agreements. But these disparate elements work as one system, coordinated through institutions such as the OECD, the World Economic Forum, and the G7. To challenge these institutions and laws calls for a convergence which goes well beyond a concern for health. This wider convergence needs to include unionists, environmentalists, gender justice activists, and various ethnic and national groups confronting diverse oppressions and denials in their own unique settings. The 1974 call for a new international economic order was an attempt driven by the group of 77 to spur on reform of the structures and laws which were seen as preventing economic development in the global south. Unfortunately, the hopes for a new international economic order were smashed by the debt crisis and structural adjustment, by the trade agreements of the WTO, and by the ideology of neoliberalism. 2024 will be 50 years after the NIEO. It is now time to create a new roadmap for global change a transformation which will be driven by a new convergence of social and political movements. A convergence based 
on listening to the bruises of its different streams. It will build a shared analysis of the structures and systems which are common to those different bruises. It will develop programs of action which address specific and local matters in ways that also challenge the underlying system issues and which are coherent and complementary across the different streams of the movement. There were significant weaknesses in the 1974 NIEO. Chief among these was its statist orientation, structured largely around the agency of third world governments, but with no recognition of the critical role of civil society in driving change. And a second weakness, certainly as seen from 2023, was the assumption that social and economic development depended upon continuing economic growth. I'm hoping that PHA 5 in December this year could be an opportunity to broaden the reach of our convergence and to draw up a new roadmap for global change, learning perhaps from the strengths and weaknesses of the 1974 NIEO. And I'm hoping that you might find some of these ideas useful in your discussions today. My warmest wishes and thank you very much.